San Paolo, Italo style. Triple A, accent Alex Atala. He was like, this is my normal Sunday. You got some really good moves. Cooked at his house with his best friend. Yeah. I want to be a friend. <laughs> good day to be a human. Bad day to be a scallop. <laughs> Well, Sao Paulo is a sprawling metropolis. It's like 500 miles square. And, and it just keeps going on and on forever. And how many people? 30 million people. So we're in, uh, we're in Sao Paulo. We're about 15 miles outside of the center of the city. But well, we made it to Makoto. This is our first destination. Makoto is Rodrigo Olvera's restaurant and established in 1974 by his father, I, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, he's one of the most famous chefs in Sao Paulo. He's one of the chefs of the people. Yeah. You're welcome, chefs. Family run since the 1970s, Makoto is known for its traditional Northeast Brazilian cuisine that caters to people from all over the city. Makoto is a great example of how delicious, mind blowing food can remain traditional and appeal to a modern diner. I just saw some of the dishes come out. They look insane. I'm so looking forward to this. In Brazil, it's hard to find a place where people are mixed, you know. They feel comfortable with, it, with each other in here because they eat the same thing. They pay the same price. Yeah, exactly. They, they are treated the same way. We, say, we say in America, his money is just as green as the other guys. Here it is. And Makoto is actually a beef foot stew that's with some white beans and a little bit of chorizo and we, we tasted it there and Frank almost Frank almost passed out because it was so good. That is that's all you need man. You could just serve that soup and you and you'll, be, you'll be packed forever. The restaurant is so amazing. It's one of those dishes that just gets everything right. It was amazing. Makoto was inspir inspirational. Uncle, delicious. It's great to be in a real Brazilian neighborhood and, and a real Brazilian family restaurant and get to see how the real Brazilians live and eat. All right, let's do it, man. Vamos. One of the main reasons we came to Brazil was to visit our good friend and culinary icon, Alex Atala. Triple, triple A. Action Alex Atala, Action Atala. He's just like the, the all, the, the chef. His restaurant, Dom, which is number seven on the San Pellegrino World's 50 Best Restaurant list, pays homage to authentic Brazilian flavors by utilizing indigenous ingredients. He's, in, he's got complete control yeah, and, 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 and understanding of his country and his environment. He loves every aspect of Brazil and the, and the environment that he's, he's involved in. And he's just such an inspirational person. He's unbelievable. Recebi os franks em São Paulo é sempre muito divertido. Eu tinha essa fantasia. Eu gosto deles. A gente se conhece há pouco tempo, mas tem uma uma boa conexão. E eu queria trazer eles para o Brasil e, e, e mostrar um pouco essa intensidade que a gente tem aqui. A, a ideia é, é, era muito isso. Trazer eles um pouco para o meu mundo, mostrar para os franks o, o que, que era a experiência dessa de é, é, o, como eu vivo e como eu, como a gente Trabalhar muito mais feliz. Na verdade, é, é, tem acho que essa história aqui é. Fazer um pouco de esporte, para mim é muito importante ter uma atividade física. O jiu-jitsu hoje é, uma, é talvez uma, o esporte que eu leve mais a sério no meu dia a dia. É, essa, quando as pessoas veem isso, imaginam que é muito violento, eu levei eles, eles se divertiram, viram que não, não faz. Ah. Over there we got Alex Atala, one of the greatest chefs in the world, in the back, doing jiu-jitsu with some 20-year-old black belt. Yeah, Alex is giving us a little, a little self-defense course. We're gonna do a little, we're gonna do a little rolling, as they call it in jiu-jitsu. This is like sparring. <laughs> but being frank sometimes means getting sweaty. 
Sao Paulo, the Damien Maia gym. And this is my turn to be being French. <laughs> <laughs> After a rigorous jiu-jitsu lesson, we were ready to eat. Alex introduced us to his good friend, Andre, the chef and owner of Vito's, and we headed out for our first taste of Brazilian ceviche. We're at Suri restaurant, ceviche restaurant in Sao Paulo. You have a nice pisco. Pisco, pisco. So, to the bank, Frankie. To the bank. To the bone. To the bone. Okay. The, the greatest thing about you having like a surf and turf ceviche is exactly that. Because the chef here is Colombian. He's not Peruvian. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. As long as it's good food, respectful food, and we respect our client and our producer and product, we can do whatever the hell we want. I love the Brazil, I love the Brazil vibe. This, this, is, this is very Sao Paulo vibes. After our fellow ceviche, Andre invited us to his kitchen at Vito's for a late night tasting. That looks fantastic. You, guys? I wanna, what I really wanted to do it was just, you know, show you a bit of what we think about food. We don't do Italian cuisine. We do Brazilian cuisine. But if you think about it, that's going to fry a noodle a little bit. It's a Brazilian restaurant with an Italian accent. All right, so this is oxtail, all right? What's the green? It's uh, watercress. Okay. I found. So it's very typical in Brazil to, to eat oxtail and, uh, watercress. and watercress. Yes. What do you think? Delicious. Do you want some sweet? Or do you want us to stop here? I think, I, I, I think we just. Maybe? Bacon brownie? Yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. <laughs> you gotta try one of those, man. All right. So this is just a bacon brownie. You know what we can do for this toffee? Just put a little bit of black salt on top of it, and then it's gonna change the whole dish. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. It's a, I feel humbled to have you in my kitchen, seriously. Yeah, we Thank are. you very much. We are. Thank you. So, we look forward to cooking tomorrow. The next day, we headed to Alex's house. Happy Sunday, brother. You too, man. Welcome. Thank you, man. I've come to the conclusion that you really like big doors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Welcome, Alex. Thank you so much for having us. Come in. Come on. Come on. As we entered Alex's house, we entered a veritable paradise within San Paolo, complete with herb garden, pinball machine, amazing chef's kitchen, and a beautiful view of the city. For the man who has everything, Alex Italia, the most interesting man in the world. So guys, let's go to the market. Yeah, let's go. It is a nice walk, so. <laughs> this is so, something fucking cool. This is you know? amazing. You got, you got a street market. Walk each Sunday. You, yeah, me, Kat, and Ray. Yeah. We came to the market. We find something. So this is, this is an I don't have any fucking idea so what. This is, oh, this is an oh, oh, tradition. Yeah, it is. It is. Nice. Actually, it is. We're gonna see some 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 vegetables, the fish, the meat. We were gonna just check now, we'll see what uh, what inspire us, and then we yeah. went back. Start with start with the protein, fill it in with the vegetables. Yeah. The market was a surreal experience. We saw firsthand the amazing quality and diversity of fresh ingredients available in Brazil, from fresh fish to fruit. Everywhere we looked, we saw things we wanted to cook with and taste. That's how I do my that's how I do my massage. We're doing a massage. We're going to massage. Let's let's grab some some vegetables, some yeah. salad. Let's buy some chili, some chilies. Yeah, let's let's spice it up, Alex. Going to the market with Alex Atala was like going to the Vatican with the Pope. He knew everybody. Everybody knew him, and not only did everybody know him, everybody loved him. Hey, Alex! Alex running for mayor of San Paulo. From the fish purveyors to the vegetable purveyors to the funnel cake purveyor, to the old ladies, to the young kids who ran up to him, kissed him, and hugged him, and wanted to take pictures with him. That was an unbelievable experience. They had, pic they had already had pictures of him, and they're like, hey, remember this picture with me and you? No, <laughs> On I hand. Mean, you know, pictures of him and Bourdain, pictures of him and, and uh, other, other great people. 
Mas acho que hoje o que está passando na América Latina, principalmente, é que essa consciência social, é, o que é, o qual é o poder da cozinha, é, é, da, da, da cadeia do alimento. E quando você interfere na cadeia do alimento, você começa a tocar numa teia é, humana. Eu falo, do, comecei falando da minha geração, da geração de hoje, para falar o que pode ser a geração do futuro. O que nós estamos tentando fazer hoje é mostrar para o jovem cozinheiro, para o cara que está começando na profissão, que além da, da, da tecnologia, além da, da, da administração, além da criatividade, além do, da necessidade de conhecer os fundamentos básicos de ser cozinheiro, das técnicas de base do cozinheiro, a cozinha pode dar um passo para frente. We bought a ton of shit with Alex and headed back to his house to make an Italian-style home-cooked meal with several other chefs. Tudo bem? Tudo bem. E aí, tudo bem? Yeah, tudo bem. <laughs> tudo bem. Everybody in. That's what happens when you go to the market hungry. You end up buying much more stuff than you actually need. But uh, we're gonna make a bunch of stuff. Alex is gonna grill the fish. We're gonna make a orange salad. We're gonna make a watercress and fig salad. You know, we're gonna have fun. We tackled the salads while Andre and Alex cooked the lamb. They used a massive indoor charcoal grill that was built into Alex's kitchen. I love this thing, man. I want one of these in my house. Yeah. Guys, Franks, let's show you guys. Food's ready. Guys, I'm already starting. Sorry. You are so sweet, but uh... The best food is always at home. Yeah. That's as good as it gets. If you try to do the same in the restaurant, it doesn't, doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the most valuable thing that you can, you can spend on somebody is, there, is time. Yeah. You know, because it's the... You have money, you have furniture, you have paintings, you have many houses, you have an ocean, but... You only have a small amount of time, and when you spend time with somebody, it really means something. Thank you. Cheers. Just so, so many thanks. Cheers. Nice. Frank, cheers. Thank you for having us. No, no, thank you to let me thank be a you. Frank for you know, one day in my timeline. <laughs> you can be a Frank for the rest of your life. You're always a Frank, man, nonetheless. Thank you. Thank you for having us. At 6 a.m. the next morning, we piled into the car, left Sao Paulo and drove to the beach in search of scallops. Driving, driving, driving. We were having fun. We, we, we had a good drive. We pulled Alex the Tyler, of course. You know, anything that he's going to stop at or go to or come in contact with is going to be the best. We stopped at a little roadside stand. And we walked in. We got there at 8.30 and the woman was like, Hi, I'm this <laughs> Alex Atala and all his chef buddies. There's something special in this place. Yeah. It's a sausage sandwich. Yeah, and they made it on open fire. You see they're cooking the, the, the sausages from scratch? Oh, yeah, it's just like the meal you have on I-95. Pepper and barrel. Dude. After the crazy good roadside sausage sandwiches, we continued our journey to the beach. So we had a beautiful drive, and we arrived in this beautiful town of Ubatuba, which is this incredible, lush environment on the ocean. One of the things you have to note about Ubatuba is that it's an amazing marina. It's like Miami Marina, like beautiful giant yachts. Each one is like $12 million. And because when you go out of that marina, there's all these beautiful islands and yeah, places. It's to, proximity to nature. It's just to, to explore mind, and to enjoy. And mind, the, mind blowing. And you need a big boat because the seas are big. It was a really adventurous boat ride. We rolled into the, into the cove with all the islands. Anyway, naming all these gorgeous islands, which you would love to just be there for like a couple of months and just chill out and write a book. Yeah, this is what, when you close your eyes and you dream, like, uh, what does Brazil look like? Yeah. And you think of this, this is what comes to mind. Oh my God, I could, I, I could be live here forever. And we're being greeted because we're with the Itala bandwagon. The agriculture's guys came out with their uh, their little skiff and they, and they picked us up. Frank, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Frank, 
Frank? Yeah. Frank, 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 these people, these people are truly living a really, really beautiful Zen existence. This is uh, about uh, 10 guys working, and this is an association. We work together, and we, in our case, especially, we work with other producers in the coast. This is our uh, of the heart, the farm of the heart, you know. Good for the environment. Good for the people, you know. He's supplying he's supplying chefs and restaurants all over this area, up to Sao Paulo. He's one of Alex's uh, suppliers, scallop, scallop yeah. suppliers, and it's good for the for the water and it's good for the environment. It's a beautiful thing. We pulled up to the reef. It's just this big, flat deck, floating. There's scallops everywhere. Yeah, there's a field of pylons, and each one has what he called a lantern. A lantern. But it's bigger. So this is for cleaning scallops. They're basically cleaning scallops for, uh, for the restaurants. They come like this. So they have to take this is like little oysters that, that just hang around it. So they clean first here. And they put it here. And then you have to put it one by one by hand. And, um, and that's for what? Exactly. And then, you, and then you put it there. And then they're ready to go. And then they're ready to go. But basically just eat the uh, yeah, nature. Yeah. You don't cook No. I have this every day or, or three times a week. You want to try a scallop? What was amazing is that when you get the scallop so fresh, it's so alive. You know, you have to really kill it. Yeah. You know, you basically have to get in there and shuck it. You have to slice the slice the muscle off. Yep. And when you open up the top shell, you're looking at the scallop. It's still pumping. Yeah. It's a valve. It's a bivalve. So it's like it's yeah. pumping, and it's like when you touch it, it feels like the heart. Uh, this is the eye. Yeah. So it should be like this. Become crunchy. Take a salt here. No. Yeah. That whole eye thing, I had never known that. Those little blue dots? Yeah, you take the scallop out and right around the rim are its eyes, and then you, you, you tuck that in and then smack it, it makes it hard like a clam. Genius. So what? So it's okay for your workers to have as much scallops as they want? They can eat as many? Yeah. <laughs> Good day to be a human, bad day to be a scallop. <laughs> Alex is doing a beautiful job of opening every scallop for us. Good? Oh. Better than good. <laughs> Uber tuba cove scallop. How was it? Alex decided to put on his scuba gear and he or his uh, his spear fishing snorkel gear. Yep. And he dove, he went out and then we dove in and we followed him around. <laughs> Swam out. Well, no, I jumped in the water. I had to jump in, it was delicious. Swam out to him and he goes, I got a fish. Got two fish. Speared them from the top and from the side. We climbed on the rocks. We got scraped up on the rocks. Got some battle scars here. <laughs> so we took the boat ride back. Wind was behind us this time. Seas were slightly smaller. It wasn't as rough a ride. We were basically pushed. We uh, rode the waves back to Ubatuba. After an exhausting day at the scallop farm, Alex took us to a local beachside restaurant for a traditional coastal meal. This family-owned restaurant was located right on the beach, and everyone was beyond excited to see Alex. <laughs> the people are so beautiful. They're so friendly. They just, you know, I don't understand the words that, that were being spoken, but I always understood the conversation. Bravo, bravo. Tudo joia. Muito bom. Muito bom. Choose the guy. He's born and raised in this beach, which is called Ubatuba. Ubatuba Beach. 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 After you're out on the boat, you go into the chef's kitchen and we fry up some calamari. And we're going to go make some fish now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to go. We're gonna, we're, 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 his ankle is a professional fisherman. Yeah. You're gonna grab the the, the, the the fresh fish with some mackerel. Okay, the Spanish mackerel. Despite the language barrier, we still lent a hand in the kitchen. You know, we made uh, seafood rice 
and we made ceviche, ceviche with the we ceviche with the scallops, and we did a really cool Brazilian type of technique or Alex Tal technique where he made like it was like a paella slash risotto with seafood in it. And then he put the ceviche on top when it was cooked. So the, so the, the, the rice just kind of warmed up the top of the ceviche and all the juices from the ceviche, which had like a leche de tigre thing going on, fell into the rice. It, it was, was like... It was delicious. <laughs> it, was, it was heavenly. Come run. <laughs> all right, now we can go out, man. He was doing some midnight foraging. Just before dinner, like walking around, we're, in the, we're walking around and in somebody's backyard with a flashlight. I thought he lost his keys, actually, because it was around the car. And then we start going over there, and he's like, Frank's like, midnight foraging's happening right now. Cilantro? Yeah, well, so that's culatra. Wow. Yeah, culatra. It's nonstop action, man. It's the fucking best, man. <laughs> he was taking a piss in the bushes, and he goes, culatra! <laughs> All these little, uh, these tiny little green leaves that are growing like, around the ground and these little seed popping flowers and all, you know, just all these amazing things. After driving three hours, swimming, spear fishing, scallops cooking, we're cooking dinner at 11 o'clock at night. We're finally eating after being out for <laughs> since six o'clock this morning. Behind you, here it comes. We were inserted into this family restaurant, and it was really the family. It was a baby sleeping on the on the table. There was a grandma at the end of the table. There were husbands and wives and cousins and kids of cousins. Everybody got drunk, and we had a great time. <laughs> Brazil was a great time. We have to come back here. Well, it took a long time to get to Brazil, but it was definitely worth the wait, and we're definitely coming back because not only Alex Itala, but the country of Brazil. It's beautiful beaches, delicious food, amazing people. We're coming back. Yeah, Brazil was a much anticipated journey with Alex Atala, and it definitely didn't let us down. Yeah, it's everything we thought it was and more. Frank Casanova thanks you. The country of Brazil thanks you. Mexico thanks you. Andrea thanks you. The guy with the gata thanks you. The Casasha thanks you. The apple thanks you. The bar thanks you. Rodrigo thanks you. Alex Atala thanks you. Rene Rizepi thanks you. Uh, David Chang thanks you. Uh, Gabe Ulla thanks you. Oru Luis Reynolds thanks you. Everybody thanks you.